What's up, YouTube? Welcome to my channel. I'm Tim Lee. We have a special guest here with us today. It's my girlfriend, Tiffany. We're gonna pretty much give you guys a status update of the renovation process of our soon-to-be rental property that we're currently in the middle of renovating. Uh, we hope you guys enjoy it. A lot of it is do-it-yourself and easy stuff that you can do to save money. So let's begin this video. did was we got the wall knocked down. There was a wall that started right about here and um, connected to this wall here. We had got it knocked down and really opened up the, the area. Um, yeah. It's a huge difference just by the wall being knocked down. It's like a lot of space. This was a load bearing wall and it was also a non load bearing wall right here. Very closed in. And it pretty much closed in the kitchen. The kitchen was tiny and it um, it closed in the family room as well. So this was one of the few things I didn't do myself when you're dealing with load bearing walls and anything that's structural. You need a professional. It's best to just hire a professional. They have all the tools. And then as far as safety, it's like, it's best to just be safe. Yeah, because they had to put a beam up in the attic. Yeah, so whenever you're dealing with anything that's structural, you want to get professionals. And then they did it within like two days. It was two days and they did it. It was quick. And my contractor, he gave me a good deal. So it's best to let them do stuff like that. The next thing we did was started removing all of the flooring. The family room had carpet and the hallway had carpet. But the flooring in the kitchen, it was like a, um, a rollable vinyl. It was very cheap. We just rolled it up and then it was like another a section of wood on top of the subflooring and we had to get that up. That was actually a lot of work. And the subflooring had like mold damage underneath. So he had to fix that as well. And um, we just took up the entire floor, mainly him. <laughs> yeah, she helped out a little I bit. Mind out. you, we're living here as we're renovating it. So the kitchen was kind of just messy. The whole, matter of fact, the kitchen, the family room, every, everywhere was just a big mess. But we already knew our end goal, so we just stuck to it. And um, yeah, we really didn't mind too much. I mean, she was still in here cooking, cleaning, um, even though it was a mess. But yeah, because we, we, I knew the goal, so it was a bit frustrating, but I knew what it would turn out, and it turned out really beautiful. All right, the next thing we decided to do was paint. Now my thinking was, we might as well paint while all the flooring is, is ripped up and we don't have our flooring yet. That way we don't have to be as careful and if we do spill, it won't be a big deal because we still got to do the flooring anyway. But now I'm starting to think we should have waited a little bit because we have kids and the kids, they run around and touch the walls and a lot of spots we're gonna have to touch up before we leave. I might have to end up painting again before we leave just because the kids are always playing and, and rubbing up against the wall. But um, the color we decided to use is called Drip the Mist. It's a Sherwin-Williams paint. I, I'm glad how it turned out, but like I said, I, I, maybe I should have waited because I'm still gonna have, I'm probably gonna have to paint over a lot of spots anyway. Next thing we decided to do was paint the cabinets. Now when I came in this house initially for the walkthrough, I came to the cabinets and when I opened them, I was like, okay, I won't be replacing these because replacing your cabinets can be one of the most expensive renovations in the kitchen. Matter of fact, one of the most expensive renovations in the entire house. Uh, so you can save five to $10,000 just by painting the cabinets yourself. So what I did, I took off all of the doors, uh, took off the hardware, the old hardware, took all the doors off, took them downstairs, I primed them, and then I painted them, then I came up upstairs and I primed and painted the cabinets. The primer I decided to use is called Cover Stain by Zenzer. This stuff is amazing. It, it has a very strong odor to it, so you gotta open up the windows, but this stuff is amazing. Um, you don't even have to sand them, pretty much. Just once you put the one coat of Zinzer on there, in about maybe four to six hours, it's ready for the first coat of paint. So, and the paint that I use is called Urethane Alkyd Semi Gloss. The color of this paint is fashion gray. Tiffany actually picked this out and I think it goes perfect with the floors. We put two coats on it and it turned out pretty good. I used a paintbrush and a roller instead of using an airless blower. I think it turned out pretty good. I mean, it's not 100% perfect, but it turned out pretty good. I think it was worth it. The paintbrush and the rollers were a lot less expensive than going out to get an airless blower. And then we did the same thing with the island. Once we opened up this space, we knew we needed an island. This island is actually a sink-based stock cabinet. We got it from Lowe's for like 160. We rented a U-Haul pickup truck, me and Tiffany. We went, picked it up ourselves. I came, I um, installed it on the subflooring, I secured it, and 
did the same thing. We took the doors off, primed them, painted them, added the hardware on it. Now we have an alley. First I wasn't too sure if it would fit, but I think it, it turned out pretty good. was the flooring. We went with luxury vinyl. It's uh, stain proof, scratch proof, and it's extremely durable. Um, we picked it up from Floor Decor. It's really heavy, guys. Yeah, the color we decided to go with was, a, um, was I think it's called mixed gray. And it looks beautiful. It turns out really nice. Yeah, it's called, yeah, it's mixed gray from Floor and Decor. Yeah, it's pretty simple to install. I installed it myself. There are plenty of YouTube videos on how to install luxury vinyl planks. As long as you have the right tools. The tools that I used was a floor installation kit for about $30. The, the kit included a tapping block, a pull bar, a double face mallet, and expansion joint spacers. It's reusable, so all you have to do is buy it one time and you can just keep reusing it. I also used this Dremel Multimax tool. I would definitely recommend it. It makes it a lot easier. Um, you can cut through the vinyl, say if you need to cut a space for the, uh, for the floor vent, you can cut, cut through the vinyl. Um, you also can cut through the drywall, the baseboards, if you need to fit a, a piece of the, uh, the vinyl plank somewhere. And else I used was a circular saw. I used this to actually cut the vinyl, because um, of course it's not gonna fit perfectly from one, from one side of the room to the other. So to cut the vinyl, I used this circular saw. Uh, I would definitely recommend this too, and these are pretty cheap too. So long as you have the right tools, installing luxury vinyl planks can be very, very simple and easy. I actually did it on the steps as well and down in the foyer. I'm a big fan of keeping the same flooring throughout the house, so for the most part, it's gonna be this luxury vinyl, and for the, in the bedrooms, we'll probably get like a darker color carpet. I think carpet is okay in the bedrooms, especially if it's a darker color, so. Uh, the next order of business was the lighting. Well, when we moved in here, the lighting was terrible. We had a ceiling fan right here, and we had a light right here in the kitchen, then we, we had an older light that was in the foyer, and those were the only lights we had. There was only two light switches right here. Um, these other two I actually added, but so I took the ceiling fan out, and we decided to go with recess lights, so I bought a pack of six recess lights. We got them from Home Depot for about $60. Um, and installing the recess lights was pretty easy. I lined the holes up, cut the holes. Once I found a power source, which was pretty easy because it was a ceiling fan right here, so I used that power source, ran the wiring to the first recess light, and then used that recess light to power the next one, and then used that one to power the next one, all the way to the end. As long as you do everything safe, make sure you turn the electricity off first. You can go on YouTube and learn how to do this as well. But it's also a good idea to call uh, an electrician just to have them double check your work. My stepdad, he is an electrician. So after I was done, any electrical work I did after I was done, I would call him just to make sure I was doing the right thing and he, he approved of it. So this can save you a lot of money. Now this light right here in the kitchen, it was the same exact light, but we just went and, just went and got a newer one pretty much for like $40 from I think Home Depot or Lowe's. So I took out the old one and just replaced it with a newer light. These lights over the Allen, these pendant lights, I installed these as well. This was pretty simple. Once you know how to install lights, it's all pretty much the same thing. You have the, the, the Bromex wiring. You just run it from the power source to one light and then run that to the other light. You have to get up in the attic. That's probably the hardest thing, climbing in the attic. Other than that, it's pretty simple once you understand electricity. This light, like I said, this, this ceiling fan was not even over here when we got here. This, the family room was closed off and very dark. This ceiling fan, we got a gray wood ceiling fan to match the floors. Um, so I installed this. It came with its own light switch. So I ran that through the wall to control the ceiling fan. I like how that turned out. And like I said, it was only two light switches over here. I added one for the pendant lights over the island and then the one for the ceiling fan. Then the, the recessed lighting and then one for the foyer. That was already a light, but all we did was just change it, made it look better. We took the old one out. The old one looked like it probably was the original one that came with the house. So we replaced that. Like I said, once you start learning electrical, it's, like, it's not as hard as you think. As long as you turn the power off, it still can be worth it just to get it looked over by an electrician to make sure you did things safe and up the code. Next order of business, we got baseboards and we installed baseboards through the whole level. The baseboards were pretty cheap, we got them from Home Depot. If you're gonna um, install your own baseboard, you gotta get a meter saw. That'll help you with the corners. Now here's a tip, if you don't get the corners perfect, 
don't don't worry about it too much. You could just get some joint compound, patch it in, and then after it dries, come and sand it. People won't even know the difference, trust me. Okay, so next we decided to do the countertops. We went with white quartz countertops. This is something that we did not do ourselves as well. Yeah, we didn't do this ourselves because I would have had to pay full price for the countertops and my contractor, he would have got his contractor discount. And after I would have had to get all the materials just to install the countertops, I would have been paying just as much as I paid him to do it. And he gave me a good deal anyway. So, and then um, countertops can be tricky. It's best to leave that to the professionals. So those are the two things I got my contractor to do was the load bearing wall and the countertops. Well, first of all, it was really, really quickly. They installed it, it took about an hour, maybe, maybe two at the most. And um, of course you would have had to rent a truck because this is really, really heavy. Yeah. So to save money and time, it was best to get the contractor to do it. So the next order of business was the backsplash. And we went with a marble mosaic wall tile. We got this from Home Depot. I did this myself as well. And instead of using the mortar and mixing and making a mess and spreading it all across the walls, I use simple mat. It's a sheet with adhesive and it bands the walls and the backsplash together. But you pretty much get the sheet, you cut it and, and place it on the wall and then you put your tile on the wall. It's like an adhesive to it and it bonds it together and it's extremely durable. People use it in showers, they use it on countertops, backsplash. So yeah, I like how it turned out. Now to cut the backsplash, I used the grinder with the diamond disc blade. This blade is made for cutting concrete and stone and tile. I used that to like to cut the backsplash uh, evenly and straight. I also used it to cut out the outlets, the spots for the outlets. So yeah, it was pretty, it wasn't that hard. It was pretty simple. And then I used some pre-mixed grout. The color I used was alabaster. Using the grout was kind of kind of messy. I, I wish I would have made better preparations, but I mean, it still turned out pretty good. Um, so yeah, I would recommend doing the backsplash yourself. For new appliances, the um, dishwasher, stove, and microwave. We are gonna get a new refrigerator, we didn't get it yet. After, after everything was done, the kitchen really came together, it really started to look good. All right, so thank you guys for joining us as we gave you guys an up-to-date status of our renovations of our soon-to-be rental property. So if you are looking to renovate your kitchen or your property, make sure you guys like and sub. Or if you're into real estate and finances, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. And hit that bell to be notified. Make sure you, you, make sure you hit the notification bell. And like always, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.